Hi everyone, welcome to Amazing Women's World. Today I am going to show gorgeous pretty pink dress over by Aishwarya. Designed by international designer Aisha Ramadan. Can you notice how this pattern is exploring within two couple of months? She wore the same pattern dress two times. So let's get started. I will be using the raw silk for this project. And I am taking the width of 200 meters. And the same as lining. And with the half meter I will be preparing the bodies. The small difference in these two patterns over ash. The bodice is same whereas the difference is the skirt part. The first one is the box pleated whereas the second one is the circle skirt. And the bodice of the first pattern is with the extended sleeves high neck pattern. Whereas the second one is the halter neckline. So firstly I will be preparing for the bodice. The bodice is designed with pentak of both horizontal and vertical lines. Now I will be preparing the vertical lines of 1 inch gap between each pentax. As I am preparing for the 7 years old girl, I don't want to leave any gaps in the center between each pentax. But if you are preparing for an adult, Maintain the gap of half inch. That means mark the lines of one and half inches gap between each winter. Whereas in the pick, there they maintain the gap of one and half inches between each winter. Whereas I am preparing for seven years old girl, I am maintaining the gap of one inch between each winter. Now fold on the marked lines and start sewing, leaving a small space and start sewing, just adjacent to that line. Like this pin tip you will get for the each line. Ensure that you maintain equal lengths and equal gaps. This is the way we will prepare for the vertical pentax. I'll also prepare the horizontal pintex which is very small for the waistband with little gap and very small in size. Nearly 12 to 15 horizontal lines you must prepare for the waistband. The horizontal pentax must be very small in size and also gap between each pentax is also very less. I maintain the gap of half an inch and I mark the lines. On that lines, I will give the pentax. With these two horizontal and vertical pentax, I am ready with the bodies. I will show how to draft the pattern and the required length of the fabric. I 
For this project, I'll be preparing the box pleats of six. It's not the standard ones that you can go for only six. It's up to you. You can go for six, eight, ten. Now I'll show you how to take the width of the fabric. Here the waist length I would be marking for 24 inches and I would require 6 pleats. So to know the length of each pleat, the calculation is like waist length divided by desired number of pleats. The desired number of pleats could be 6, 8 or 10. As I said here I am marking for the 6 so that 24 inches waist length divided by 6 now I got each pleat length is 4 inches and now I'll show you how to calculate for the width of the fabric that means the waist length into 3 times that is 24 inches into 3 is 72 inches plus 2 inches for the seaming elements why I took 3 times for the width is box pleat will have the same length on the top and in the middle will split into 2 that means 2 halves and down also you will get one more pleat so total together will have 3 pleats so that's why we will take 3 times so the total width of the fabric here I am taking is 74 inches now I'll show you the draft pattern of the bodies. For that I would be taking the four folds chart that means both front and back panels. Start marking in the center. The total bodies length I would be taking is 11 and half inches plus 1 inch for the seaming elements. Total I would be marking for 12 and half inches. And the neck width is 2 3 4 inch and the shoulder length is 2 inches. Mark the shoulder slope down of 1 inch from that shoulder line. Connect the shoulder slope line to neck line. From there mark the armhole length of 5 inches. Now this would be the chest line. and mark for the six and half inches on this chest line with the seaming elements of one and half inches join all the points by drawing the lines and mark the midpoint of two and half inches on the armhole line now connect it curvely to the chest line to the armhole line and mark three fourth inch in towards the midpoint of the armhole line connect it curvely from the chest line to the shoulder line now mark for the waistline of 6 inches with 1 and half inches extra for the seaming elements connect that to the chest line and in this pattern I would be showing the extended pattern sleeve here I am extending for 2 inches as I said I am sewing it for the baby girl and if you want to sew for an adult you can extend that to 4 to 5 inches as per your desired length of the sleeve now connect the 2 inches extended sleeve line to the shoulder line slanting now I am showing you the drafting part of the neckline. For the back neck I would be marking the V shape of neck deep 5 inches and also to the waistline I would be leaving 1 inch for the seaming elements. Now I'll mark the dotted lines towards the armhole, shoulder line and the neckline of 1 cm for the seaming elements.
start cutting on this marked lines firstly I would be cutting the back panel length and then I'll separate both the panels and trim the neckline and the armhole separately for the front panel Now I'll separate both the panels. Now I'll mark for the front panel neckline and also a little deep cut in the front arm hole. And for the front panel, I would be marking the high neck of U shape. With the neck deep 4 inches. Now I'll cut on these dotted lines. Now I'm ready with the bodice pattern. I'll lay this on the fabric and I'll show you how to cut. For the back panel, I'll give the slit in the center back to join the dory loops and the fabric buttons. So on the top of the bodice, I'll go with this vertical printed lines. And to the waist band, I'll be using this horizontal printed lines. Now I lay these draft patterns on the lining and cut accordingly. See this is how it will look. Both front and back body lining. I'll lay this on pretty fabric and I'll cut accordingly. I'll cut the vertical pin tucks till from the shoulder line to the lower bust line and from the lower bust line to the waist line I'll be joining the horizontal pin tuck lines. Place the lining on the wrong side, mark and cut like this. The pretty fabric is from the shoulder line to the lower bust line. That means 9 inches from the shoulder line to the lower bust line.
see this is how it looks and I'll also cut the back panels of the pretty part like this the down part I'll be joining with the horizontal printer lines I was done with the cutting part now I'll show you the aligning of all this together and making the designer piece Lay the right side of the lining on the right side of the pretty fabric and start sewing towards the wrong side leaving quarter inch for the seaming elements. Start sewing joining the neckline arm holes Give the small slits all around the neckline and the armhole without crossing the thread line. Now turn towards the right side and give a gentle press. Finishing of any garments will give rich look. So please concentrate on the finishings. Give the top stitch all around the armholes and the neckline. Ensure that the pleats are well settled when you are sewing. This is how it looks. Follow the same instructions for the back panel. Join the lining with the neckline and the armholes. I've done with the back panels. Now I'm turning towards the pretty side and I'll do top stitch towards the neckline and arm holes. I'll end both front and back panels together. Insert the front shoulder line towards the back shoulder line. Turn towards the wrong side of the back panel. Join both the shoulder lines leaving quarter inch for the seaming element. Doing in this way we will conceal the shoulder line raw edges. Any ready made garment you check out with the lining, the finishing will be like this only. 
trim a little bit towards the corner and pull inside out you can see the pretty finishings see this is the extended part of the sleeve which I took for 2 inches but in the pic you can see nearly 5 inches extended as my daughter is too thin I'm going for the sleeveless type join the other part of the shoulders Ensure that the corners is well settled and give the gentle press on the top of this extended sleeve. Join the sides under the armpit. Now to this bodice, I'll be joining the waistband of nearly 4 inches with the same elements of quarter inch on either sides to join with this bodice. I'll start joining this from the center back leaving quarter inch for the seaming elements towards the wrong side start sewing pattern the underneath left seaming towards the sides and then start joining Now turn to the right side and give the top stitch. Exactly on this joinings. And towards the back side, I'll be joining with this story loops and the fabric buttons. As in my previous videos, I've shown the joining of zip and hook and eye strap. For the little change, I'll be using this. Firstly, I'll be joining these loops with a gap of 2 inches. And on the top, I'll be joining this strip. Hold the loop like this and give the top stitch.
now on the top of this loops I would be joining the one and a half inches strip And I'm folding like this towards the wrong side and do the top stitch. Turn the loops towards the strip side. See this is how it looks and towards the another side I'll just join the strip. I'll do the hand stitch to join the buttons. I've done with this complete bodies and now I'll show you how to do the box pleats. Leave 1 inch for the seaming and as I said I would be taking 4 inches for the pleat length and again mark for 2 inches then 4 inches the 4 inch pleat should be folded that means underneath you should fold 2 inches and secure with the pin again the underneath you should leave the gap of 4 inch and fold again 2 inches like this we will prepare the box pleat means on the top 4 inch mark for the 2 inches again 4 inch and 2 inches and start pleating 4 inches mark hold it fold for the 2 inches and leave the gap of 4 inch again fold for the 2 inch like this for one pleat on the top and two pleats on the bottom so three times we are fold we are taking the length the greater the waist length the pleat will be more in size and also you will get more gear underneath these pleats it is very simple mark for the four inch again two inch four inch and two inch start making the pleats from four inch fold it 2 inches secure with the pin again leave the 4 inches underneath the pleat and remaining 2 inches should be opposite towards the folded pleat like this we have to make the pleats of 6 so start on the top 4 inches either sides of the pleat is 2 inches and underneath is 4 inches so for one pleat we are multiplying by 3. I made all the 6 pleats. See this is how it looks. To recheck I will lay the bodies on these pleats. See on the sides 1 inch I left for the seaming elements. So now it is perfectly done. I will join this. Sides of the pleat skirt. And also taking the lining of same width and giving the pleats to the waistline. If you want you can directly join this to the skirt part when you are preparing with the pleats. But I'll join it separately because to conceal the raw edges of the waistline. Give the pleats of 2 inches and sew it. I 
I've joined the sides. Now I'll give the top stitch, leaving the quarter inch. Check out this lining also. The lengths of both the skirt and the lining should be equal. It is equal, so I'm joining with the body. Firstly, I'll do the top stitch to secure the pleats. When you are sewing, remove the pins and stitch it. Ensure that the underneath fabric is well settled and there won't be any gaps between each box pleat. Now place the right side of the bodice on the right side of the skirt, turn towards the wrong side, join these two by leaving quarter inch for the seaming allowance. Ensure that the sides of the bodice should match with the sides of the skirt. The centers of both should match. And towards the back side bodice, overlap like this and hold the skirt part and do the top stitch. If you take the correct measurements, it will perfectly fit. There won't be any extras or ease left with the proper calculation and sewing. Hold it properly without any folds. Let the underneath fabric is well settled and do the top stitch. Double fold an inch towards the bottom of the skirt and do the hem. After joining the pretty part, it will look like this. Now, I'll join the lining towards the bodice wrong side. Place the lining like this and give the stitch all around the waistline. Start from the sides of the bodice, leaving foot in. Start sewing. That means the bodice should be in the center and on either side. One side is the pretty part of the skirt and another side will join the lining. 
ensure that all the raw edges should face together and you should sew towards the wrong side. See, I'll hold the sides of the lining like this. And I'll join it later after joining this. Now I'll join the sides of the lining towards the wrong side. I'll do the bottom hem for the lining, folding 2 inches towards the wrong side. To give the volume flayed skirt, join 3 to 4 layers of lining. See from the top it will look like this and towards the wrong side. See how the raw edges is concealed. How pretty it is looking from inside and outside. As I said to give much volume to this flayed part. You can join 3 to 4 linings with the stiff net. Done with this designer gorgeous pink dress. With the extended sleeves and pink tuck bodies along with the box pleat pattern suitable for any ages mark your measurements follow the pattern please try this for your loved ones they would love to wear it hope you all enjoyed watching this video catch you guys with another interesting video don't forget to subscribe share like and leave your comments thanks for watching bye for now